Hey everybody, have you ever wanted to know how to get your own samples into Logic? This is something that I've heard from a number of people recently, so I thought I would make a quick video. And it turns out that it's far easier than I even realized. Let's take a look at it. So, for instance, say you're on the web at someplace like cymatics.com and you get one of their sample packs. I just downloaded one of their free ones, to, free for download. If you want to use it in a song, I think you still have to get licensed, but um, they just have a bunch of different files you can use, right? And so the way that I've been doing this up until now has been to like say, you know what, I've got a bunch of files. Let's drag them over onto our Apple loop area. It says add to untagged loops. So perfect. This brings up a whole new tab at the top. We can click on this under user loops and there we have them all. Now I'm not going to push play on any of them. I don't want you to get too excited about what they sound like. They're awesome. What's really happening here? If you go into your music folder and then you go under music audio or audio music apps and down at the bottom it says untagged loops, you'll see those are where all those files are. Piece of cake. Let's delete this for a moment since I, they were copied and you'll see it disappears in logic. And the first thing I want to do is make sure I at least have one of these in there. It seems to be that if I just start in the file structure that it doesn't always work. But once I have those, let's just take all of the rest of these and copy them into the folder here. And you'll see all of them show up. Essentially, the untagged loops area is just another browser, file browser type thing. And from there, I can make a selection. And we can do a drum machine designer right off the edge. We're going to just let this do its thing for a second. And there we have. So now I've got a drum machine designer built off the samples that I just copied over in the finder. Super nice. Let's delete this track for a second. Oh, didn't too many. And let's come back out into the finder for a moment. We're going to copy all of those just back over. And you'll see we've just lost them all except for the one I originally brought in there. Okay, so it's a super easy way in the finder to organize your loops. This means I can come through here and say I want a new folder and say, you know, free stuff online. And you'll see this pops up over there in a second. It'll be there. And then I just throw these into here. And then I can come in and get those. If I have like a really important project I'm working on or loops from a specific song. So say I've got an artist coming in and um, it's like the Friday night session and I want to make sure everybody knows where they are and what they are, then I can just do that and it'll show up over here, right there, Friday night session. Just open it up and we can pull them out and use them. They're available in all of the projects. That means if I open up this project or the next project, anything in the Apple Loops area is going to show up there. And if you have, uh, you know, you're migrating your computer to another computer, you just have to make sure you grab that and copy it onto a drive and move it to another drive. I believe you can also store these in alternate locations, but um, for me, it just makes sense to do them in the default place inside the music folder. Okay, that's really as simple as it needs to be. If you don't like something you've created, it's super easy to just come through and delete it all, which is what I'm gonna do there and do there empty the garbage and you can move on with your life. This is a super easy way to integrate those things. The other way to do this, uh, and this becomes super important, I think, to understand is that if you want to go beyond just putting those files inside your project, but also incorporating them into the Apple Loops architecture, well, that's possible as well. Uh, in fact, it's super easy to do. You can do it with MIDI or audio files 
And uh, in some ways, it's just ridiculous how powerful this can be, but this way takes a little bit more time. And so let me show you this just with a, like a MIDI track here. We're gonna record. And there's no instrument or anything, so it's not really doing anything. But this could be an audio file, one that you've imported from some other place, or it could be a MIDI thing that you've recorded. And all we need to do now uh, is actually come through here and export region or cell to loop library. Control Shift O. And then you can give it a name. Chord Trouble, right? I'm going to give it a name uh, so I can show you where to find it afterwards. Then you decide if you want it to be a loop or a one shot. A loop means it's something designed to continue moving on and one shot means really just like a hit uh, of some sort. You can say if it's a, what kind of scale? Major, minor, neither, any, good for both. Uh, what genre it is, what key signature it is, what the tempo is will be defined by the project. And then you decide which type of instrument it's going to be. Um, jingles, mouths, keyboards, horn, all of that good stuff. Now, the real interesting thing about this, we're gonna come off of there for a second, cancel that, and let's actually load an instrument, and let's load a compressor, EQ, and let's do a MIDI effect, right? So now I'm going to select the same thing, we're going to do an export like that. We'll call this, I guess, keys trouble. It's a loop. All of that stuff is fine. We're going to say this would be keyboards, a synth, those things right there. Right? I just created it. It does an audio bounce for the reference point with the Apple Loops. This is, by the way, Apple Loops. Converting to Apple Loops has been around for a long time. I'm just going to do show my loops. You'll see keys trouble. Um, and actually, I'm going to delete that part right there. I'm going to drag this out into a no place. And you'll see a few things. One, the MIDI all came out. The instrument got loaded. The arpeggiator got loaded, the compressor got loaded, and the channel EQ got loaded. So not only is this a way to save the MIDI file itself, but it's also a way to make this a preset for it. So we're going to pull this one up onto the audio track, and um, you're going to see that it actually has an audio render file for it as well. So it can be audio or MIDI at that point. Um, I don't believe that this shows up in as an actual instrument preset, but I've never actually looked. So let's do XEXE and it doesn't. Okay, that's what I suspected, but um, it's a nice way to do this inside logic. Similar functionality for audio files as well. Okay, so a really powerful way to incorporate these files, either ones you've gotten for free that you've created yourself, somebody else has given you that you've paid for into the Logic ecosystem so you don't have to always um, be finding them. The last thing I want to do is show you where this lives on the hard drive because uh, this could be a useful thing at some point for you. Now, the library for users is hidden in the Finder. There's a way to activate it permanently, um, but for this, I'm just going to show you, for instance, how to get there on a one-time basis. I'm going to go to Go go to folder, and then this is the code right there, the tilde slash library slash audio slash Apple loops. We're gonna hit return. And you can see the library is like a ghosted folder. Normally it's hidden again for the users, but this is where the user loops live. And so uh, this is the audio render of that and the other ones. Um, this is the first time I've ever tried this. I'm gonna delete those right now and see what happens out here. I don't know. 
looks like they're just grayed out and you can't play them anymore. However, and you can't even use them. So it doesn't delete them from the actual structure. So we're going to leave them there for now. Okay, cool. So maybe a little bit more knowledge about some of these uh, loops, files, samples that you could be pulling from other places. Hopefully this helps you and um, hopefully it doesn't drive you too much crazy. And this is it. I'll talk to you in the next video.